Good morning, good morning. Who's here? Travis, hello. Erica, good morning. There we go. Who knows this one? Because I'm happy, clap along and you just like a... Good morning, Dot. Who else is happy? Happiness is the truth. Let's get this chat going too. Lori and Lori. Awesome. Hello, hello, hello. Let's get that smile on our face. Think about things that make us happy. I love this song. A little playoff of if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Excellent. All right, as people continue to come in. Because I'm happy, clap along with you, feel like a room is the roof. Get your energy up, even if you're sitting. Get your energy up. Get ready to learn more today. All of you how to people, we're going to take this all right to the golf course today. Yeah. If you feel that's what you want to do. Hello, Brenda. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, when in cause, things start to flow. Isn't that amazing? Being in cause. Everybody understand that cause and effect idea, right? Effect, you, you're, you're kind of in the passenger of your, of your, the car of your life. And then when you're in cause, you're in the driver's seat. You get to decide everything. You get to determine where you are, your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, where you are right now and where you're headed. So it's great to be in cause. How am I feeling? Well, you can hear, you can hear a little bit of scratchiness. I apologize for that. Um, I feel better now than I, than I had. I, I rested lots yesterday. Thank you. Good morning, Jessica. All right. People keep coming in. Why don't you share with us? Thank you for asking, Lori. Um, not quite 100% yet, but I am, I am fired up. I can tell you that. <clears throat> share with us in the chat if any of you have done the um, meditation and, and you received a gift. We gave you a meditation. And, and even if it was the, the grounding and connecting one, did, did you do either meditation so far you have two there's going to be a meditation each day for you um anybody anybody take some time to do that meditation it's a really really great meditation where you actually get a gift and when you're in that deeper state you're in your unconscious mind and when we ask what is the gift that i need what is the gift your unconscious mind gives you gifts of what you need to take everything to that next level it's really powerful so if you, uh, I did the medication from the first session. Okay, grounding and connecting. That is part of the process I do while well, each morning. And I will do that right before. And I close my eyes because I'm picturing my grounding cord, all anchored, picturing connection to source, feeling all of that uh, on both sides, that, that ultimate wisdom, intelligence, the, the balance and security and safety from being connected to the center of the earth, feeling all of that. I fell into a deep sleep after connecting, <laughs> woke up an hour later. See, those meditations can, can serve you well. That's awesome. Um, so that's good stuff. I do that right before rounds of golf. I'll sit in the, I'll pull in and I'll sit in the parking lot and I'll release any energy no longer serving me, bring in that positive. And then sometimes even during the round, this I've done this too, where I'm waiting for someone else to putt. I'll take a deep breath, close my eyes and check in on the grounding cord, check in on that connection to source, know that gold, love and light continues to flow into me and that my intuition will be my loudest voice throughout the round of golf. So it just you just have another tool, very relaxing, but need to keep grounded longer. There we go. So Travis, you notice you had a little trouble Staying grounded. Excellent. Excellent. What came up with that? Super. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Uh, we'd love for you to share. You can always um, just make sure this defaults to hosts and panelists. 
make sure if we want everyone to read what you're saying, put everyone, you become the teacher. It's really powerful for you to share for you as well as other people to hear from you because we all can relate and learn from you as well. It's a fantastic, let me, uh, let me get my share screen going. Any other shares or thoughts? Any questions about um, what we did yesterday, the toward and away from? Get the chat back up. Excellent. Excellent. All right. I am so excited because really here um, plays the game of golf and and or is a highly competitive athlete and this is going to help you become your number one fan say that right now i am my number one fan because here's the thing you taking care of you first is the key you taking care of you like i mean we all hear it put the oxygen mask on first before helping others it's time for you to put your oxygen mask on. It's time for you to make your move and celebrate you. Time for you to high five yourself, put that smile on your face. Taking care of you first. And, and I, of course, I have an acronym. Good morning, Charles. I have an acronym called Focused Action Now. It's about taking action. What actions will you take each and every day? What actions will you decide to take to help your future become better? Focused action now. Taking that time in this moment, what is the next best step I can take to create the life I imagine? To, to have all of the dreams that I'm dreaming about. And by now, you know that it's the unconscious mind that has the secret to you achieving all of your dreams, which oh, I'm so excited to show you how to do this. We're going to start with some beliefs today, and then we're going to really get into the golf aspects of it. So Tony Robbins, someone I've been following for many, many years, beliefs have the power to create and the power to destroy. Human beings have the awesome ability to take any experience of their lives and create a meaning that disempowers them or one that literally saves their life. Whoa, that's deep. So what does that mean exactly? Our beliefs have the power to create and the power to destroy. Excuse me one moment. Just feel a little, a little nasally coming on here. <clears throat> Um, human beings have the awesome ability to take any experience of their lives, create a meaning. So it's so much of this is about, and you're finding that yesterday, we asked you the question, what's the meaning you put to that? What did that represent to you? What is the meaning you put to daily life situations? When you walk into a room and you happen to see someone you recognize and you notice they turn away from you, they turn away and they were looking in your direction and they turned away. What is the meaning you put to that? Is the meaning that, oh, they're mad at me. What did I do? They don't think I belong here. Free from that, free from that. Or you just say, oh, I wonder if they just got distracted or they didn't see me. Can't wait to see them later when they're, they're back from where, wherever they had to go do. So it's the meaning we put to things. You know, like I tell, I tell people all the time, it's like when you're, you're walking on the street and someone gives you that once over, right? They, their eyes go up and down and they check you out. What is the meaning you put to that? Is the meaning, oh my gosh, did I spill something? Is my fly open? What did I do? Oh my God, I look, I knew this was a horrible outfit today. I knew I looked fat in this. I can't believe, oh my gosh, that the person was judging me like that. Or is it, dang, I must look good today. They were checking me out. And I bet when they walk by, they're going to turn and check me out from behind too. <laughs> so what is the meaning? So from where does that meaning come, right? You could, you could put either meaning. You don't know what they're thinking anyway. It comes from our own beliefs. What do we believe about ourselves? Do we believe we belong? Do we believe we don't belong? Which is it? Do we believe we really look good today? We love us and we just know like, whoo, I'm just going to show up and be my authentic self. And dang, they just checked me out. How cool is that? They notice it too. Not my charisma, my energy. They've noticed it. 
So think about the meanings you may put to things when we're on the golf course. I had a, a client was telling me a story about she was in this um, highly competitive qualifier. It's a USGA qualifier. And she said the rules official kept following our group and watching our group. And she said the part one of the gals in my group was getting so upset. Like, she's like, why does he keep following us? Like, we're playing fast enough. We're not breaking any rules. Like, I don't understand, you know, and just all of her energy. And then she wasn't playing as well. Her energy went to the rules official watching. And I said, to, I asked my client, how did you handle it? She said, you know, I, I was okay. Like, I just, I noticed what she was doing. And I made sure I didn't do that. And I said, what if it was possible that the rules official thought you all had the best swings of anyone he was watching. And while he wasn't called to make a ruling, he loved watching your group. What if it was that? What if he just really enjoyed watching you play? She said, oh my gosh, I never even considered that. What is the meaning you're putting to things? You know, when you walk up to a group and they're in a conversation and you walk up and no one says anything to you, oh man, they don't want me here. Or wow, they must, that, that must be an intense conversation that they are, they need to finish up. And then, then I'm sure they'll notice and say, hey, welcome. What is the meaning you put to things? Because that's the beliefs. So I love this. I love this story. Um, Tony Robbins, uh, actually, no, this isn't the Tony story. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got Tony on my mind. So there was a, uh, a mom and a little girl walking by a circus and they, they happened to be in the back where there were elephants and they were looking at the elephants. And they noticed the big, huge elephant that had this little stake in the ground and a little rope attached to its ankle. And, and the little girl says, Mommy, can that, that rope and that thing hold that big elephant? She said, well, I, I wouldn't think so. But, so the trainer was there. They called him over. And they asked him. And they said, can that actually keep that elephant from going anywhere? That's a big, strong elephant. And he said, no, actually, it couldn't. But the elephant doesn't try. So, well, why doesn't the elephant try? Well, when it was a young baby elephant, that stake was big enough to hold it. And it would try to walk and it would try to go and try to get away and try to get away. And it couldn't. And it eventually, it believed that when that rope was on its ankle, it couldn't go anywhere. So it stopped trying. Even though it's big and strong enough now, so you and your coaches and what, what we want you to do here is to go deeper and find out what are the beliefs that you decided when you were young that aren't serving you anymore. How do you handle or what do you do if your negative belief is verified? Can you give me an example, Travis? Can you give me an example of that? Because verified, I just want to know how, how specifically do you know it's verified, I guess is what I really want to know. Great question. Great question. So does everybody understand this? The belief from when we were young isn't serving us anymore in so many instances. So Charles had the same question. That's what's so great about asking questions. And here's... Um, Here's something that Tony Robbins had shared. One of his clients was a stutterer. Do you remember Rocky and Bullwinkle? And, and, and Bullwinkle stuttered. He'd be like, rock, 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 key, 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 key. Well, his client stuttered so much that it was influencing and effect as it, affecting his entire life. And uh, obviously you can imagine how his, even his confidence, his value, his self-worth, he couldn't get a job that he wanted to support his family. So he goes to Tony Robbins. They find out that what happened was when he was three years old, they got to the root cause. He remembered sitting in his TV room, watching Rocky and Bullwinkle. In the other room, his parents were fighting, screaming, yelling, throwing things. It was even violent. It was just this, he was so scared. He was so scared. He's three years old. He hears all this going on. He's watching Rocky and Bullwinkle. He gets up and he goes out and he's like, mum, 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 mum. And he stuttered. Mum, 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 mum. And his mom kneels down and says, what is it, baby? What can I do for you? 
And in the moment, he went from being so scared to feeling loved and important and valued, supported, all the attention she had, the fighting stopped, he felt safe, all of these positive emotions flooded him. From the negative emotions of being so scared and unsure, all the positive emotions came up. All the positive. And in that moment, you know what his neurology did? His unconscious mind decided, this is the decision that was made. When I stutter, I'm safe, I'm loved, I'm secure, I'm supported, I'm valued, I'm worthy. Boom, put that together. So then his unconscious mind from then on decided to stutter. And he had, he had no idea about that consciously. It was going deep. It was going deep and figuring out what are the beliefs in the unconscious mind. Because it's the decision that was made and then we find proof of it the rest of our lives. We keep finding the proof. We keep finding the proof. We keep finding the proof. That's what, that's what happens. All right. Does that make sense? Let me know if there's any questions. Okay, hold on. I thought I did the right thing in a high school drill. Team, let's say team. And the coach said I was supposed to just walk off and not march off. Okay. My line marched off and the other line walked off. So she made us look bad. And I thought that my procedure was better we had not been told what to do. Still haunts me. Oh my gosh, thank you for sharing that. Okay, so what are the negative thoughts and emotions that come up when you say it still haunts me? What are the negative thoughts and emotions that are coming up for you, Travis? So that what are the negative thoughts and then how, how does that make you feel? What are the feelings? How, what does that make you think? Thank you for sharing. I did the right thing. I just want to joke or say. Joke, you know, walked off. Okay, awesome, awesome. So we're gonna we're gonna support you in that. I think Erica's your coach as well, and I'm sure all the coaches are always looking to make make. Um, to understand, then we're going deep. All right. So this is, here's another acronym for me, bear power. Your beliefs influence your emotions, which will determine your actions, which gives you your results. So your beliefs are the key to then creating the thoughts and emotions that come up. That's why we, we consistently ask you your thoughts and emotions. What are the thoughts and emotions that came up? Because we are going to get down back to the beliefs because it's the beliefs that truly create them because your beliefs will influence your thoughts and beliefs. And that's a great question as well. What specifically was verified? So you say you have a belief that was verified. So now we want to know negative thoughts and emotions that were coming up because that's going to help us get to the belief unless you already know that belief, what was verified, okay? Beliefs create the thoughts that we think, right? Which gives you our emotions. So, you know, if you're thinking happy, positive thoughts and you're in a positive body language, as we know with Blab, you really can't feel a negative feeling. But our beliefs, our true unconscious beliefs, oftentimes will then actually all the time influence our emotions. All right. So we want you to have bare power, bare power. And if any of you have an incident, like, like what Travis shares, and thank you so much for being open because you become our teacher and it allows us to ask questions that people can then say, Oh, wait, I had a situation that was similar. Let me ask these questions. What are my negative thoughts and emotions that are coming up? What belief was created because of this situation? What did I decide to believe? What did I take this to mean about myself? What did you, okay, there we go. <laughs> what did you think about yourself because you marched off? When she said you made them look bad, what did that represent to you? Excellent. So everybody write these questions and, and ask them yourself in the situations that are coming up from you. Because Charles, Charles responded right away. Great question. Great question. I felt like everyone in the drill team thought I made everyone look bad because I led my line off 
in uh, off differently. No one would ever want me to be a leader. There we go. So there's the belief that, that no one would ever want me to be a leader, right? What did you then think of yourself? What other negative thoughts and emotions came up in that situation? And those other the questions that Erica wrote. Everyone ask these questions to yourself when you have a situation that comes up. And that's, you know, when you're in that situation and then you feel like the, that you were the leader and you let the team down in a way when you were following direction. I mean, it's understandable. It's very normal for you to feel the way you're feeling and then create a limiting belief. So no judgment on the judgment. We want to get to the root cause and understand it and understand the meanings you put to it and then help you unleash it. Okay. So thank you for sharing. Travis, thank you so much. This is great. So ask those other questions. So beliefs influence emotions, determine actions or inactions and give you your results. So as an example, if I believe, if I have a negative disempowering belief, I'm not smart enough, right? If I'm not, I feel less than, right? Or think I'm less than, I feel inadequate. Um, I feel bad about myself. I don't feel worthy, right? If I think, and we're all free from this, right? If I have a belief, I am not smart enough. What are the actions? I was trying to write my book. I kept getting busy with busy work. There was one day, you know, I kept doing day after day. I'd have it blocked off in my schedule, write my book, write my book. And all of a sudden, you know, I get ready and I'd start writing it. And then I'd get hungry, go get something to drink. Well, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm thirsty, thirsty, get some drink, get something to eat. And then all of a sudden I was over by the junk drawer. I happened to open it up to get something out. I start cleaning the junk drawer. And it was in that moment, I was looking down and I stopped and I said, what am I doing? It seems like every time I go to write my book, I get busy doing something else. You know, I mean, it's nice to clean out a junk drawer, but not when I had planned to do something that was um, really important for me, like a goal of mine. And I kept doing that. So your unconscious mind is going to protect you. If it is a belief, I'm not smart enough. The thing it's going to try to do is say, don't write this book because people are going to read it and they're going to validate what you already believe about yourself is that you're not smart enough. So don't put something out published because everyone will know you're not smart enough because then you're going to, they're going to read your words. So my unconscious mind is saying, let me protect you based on the belief I had. So it kept self-sabotaging, except getting, give, giving me a different focus. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So that's what we mean about the beliefs, create the, the thoughts we have and the emotions. I throw in a T, it doesn't fit with bear, but it's really the beliefs and the emotions, actions and results. But our beliefs will obviously create our thoughts, right? So what we believe about ourselves, so what we think about ourselves and our emotions. So what were the actions? I kept self-sabotaging and the result was it took me longer to write my book than I had intended because then I got coaching and I worked with my coach to shift that, to create a breakthrough so I could believe I was smart enough. And we worked together. So, you know, I needed a coach. I needed a coach to help me through that. I don't know if I would have ever written the book unless I had the coach. Uh, yes, I had a caregiver. That was often critical. I learned that it was her family's way to do things, not ours. After time, I understood I was actually fine. Very impressionable times. Think about how this, that no one wants you to be a leader is impacting you. Did I miss more? Um, excellent, okay. Thank you, Charles, yes. So what beliefs came up? For you, Charles, what did it represent to you when you had a caregiver doing things differently? What did, what did that represent to you? What did you take it to mean about you? Okay, we are going to get into golf. We're going to bring this to golf and help you set yourself up to step into your avatar and play your best golf. So first thing we're going to talk about is the pre-shop routine. All right. There's a success formula to that. All right. 
first most important release emotions from any previous bad shots we've got to release them move forward get in the present moment set yourself up to create the best shot possible Excuse me. We're going to get you in a positive mindset before each shot. Because if you're going to answer the question, hey, did I try my best today and say yes? You that means you had a positive mindset. You had a positive mindset for every shot. You had positive emotions in your body for every shot. You're going to believe and visualize. You're going to see the shot you want to hit and believe you can hit it. Breathe, smile, gratitude. Breathe, smile, gratitude. So releasing those bad emotions. Partly when you ground and connect beforehand, you are going to, you will release them, right? Because you can just picture, oh, any negative emotions, you just, that gold, love, and light is just pouring into you and pushing any negative emotions Thoughts and emotions down your grounding cord to be transformed and used again in a positive way. And so you can just flush them out right there. Get yourself in a used blab, right? Body language. Put a smile on your face. Get in gratitude. Take your deep breaths. Positive words and thoughts. I've got this. I can do it. Stay in the present moment. This moment. We know the past doesn't equal the future. It's because you believe something in the past doesn't mean you have to believe it forever. You break through and boom. You, you have an empowering belief rather than a disempowering belief. And you visualizing, you're telling your unconscious mind, I've got this shot. That's the shot. And it's on board when you visualize a shot more specifically of exactly what you want to do. This is the same in life. I was a daydreamer, less than enough. That was not true. Yeah. And consciously, Charles, you know that now. It's understanding what the beliefs were unconsciously like even the stutterer consciously he would say no that stuttering doesn't make me feel loved and valued and safe secure his unconscious mind believed that though so that's what we want to understand what did you believe at the time that possibly is still there influencing you today even though consciously you're like no that's not the case at all and we want to break you through unconsciously unconsciously. So what was the meaning you put to the different home that did it differently? Okay. Pre-shot routine. This is, um, I learned this and implemented it many years ago from my friends, Lynn Pia, and I mean, Lynn Marriott and Pia Nielsen who came up with think box, play box, memory box. So it's in the think box that we want to be thinking, planning, deciding, making our decisions. We want to stay back away from the spot we're going to actually swing the club. Okay. So we want to think and plan. So, um, this is a really cool part. Uh, Phil Mickelson and Bryson DeChambeau were talking about on that, um, on the broadcast when DeChambeau was playing Kepka. They were talking about the beta waves and alpha waves, like going and, and theta waves, even going from the beta waves where you're thinking you have more brainwave activity and then stepping over that yellow line is called the decision line. So thinking, planning, see, visualize, and then step over that decision line and get in the play box, which means now your wavelengths are more alpha, theta. And I've created meditations to practice and make that happen unconsciously through hypnosis that when you step over that decision line, you automatically change your brain, brain waves. How cool is that? Because how many of you have made those golf swings that just felt so good? Your mind was completely quiet. Your body was relaxed. You swung. You don't really even remember hardly feeling anything. And the ball just goes exactly the way you wanted to. So that's the key in the play box. You know, basically I'll take that one last look at the target keep the visual of the target in mind, I take a deep breath and I go, but my mind is very quiet. I may say a word like, yes, that's it. There's no swing thoughts whatsoever. Then the memory box is your post-shot reaction. What are you storing? Yes. Favorite way to hit the ball, Lori. No thinking. 
What are you storing as far as your memory? Negative emotion with any activity. So you have, say, a three wood in your hand and you swing and, and maybe you have, maybe you haven't done this, but say you hit a poor one and you attach a negative emotion to that. Well, the next time you grab the three wood, guess what's going to happen in your unconscious mind? Oh, it's attached to that. It's attached to that action. So now all of a sudden, for, for some reason, we don't have confidence in our three wood anymore. So we attached a negative emotion to it. So what you do right after the shot is really important. You want to be neutral or positive. So you don't connect any negatives. There was a, a, a time, Lorena Ochoa, one of the, at the time, she was the best player when she was playing, best player in the world. I mean, just incredible golfer from Mexico. She was playing um, in the United States, but near Mexico. So she had a ton of family in. She's on the 18th hole of this, um, this event. She has a chance to win the tournament. There's water down the left side. She takes out her driver. She'd been hitting it all day. Somehow she drop kicks it, snap hooks it into the water and went on to lose this event. Well, her family was there. She had so much family there because it was very close to her home. And she was a wreck. It was like afterwards, the, the, the negative emotion attached to that. And her family was there. People were crying. They're supporting her. Oh my gosh. And, and, and the thought that actually Lynn and Pia were there, they're watching. They're like, wow, I wonder what kind of memory she's storing there. She needs to really release those. And then what happened later that same year, she has a chance to win the U S open. She's a chance to win the U.S. Oh, this is a story I was going to tell later, but this is good. This is good now, too, because it's about the memory box as well. The chance to win the U.S. Open. She's on the 18th hole, different golf course, but very similar looking 18th hole. water all down the left side. And she goes to get her club out and she says to her caddy, I think I'm not going to hit driver on the hole. He's like, why are you hitting driver? Like, I think she was ahead by one or something like that. Just knock it out there knock it on. You're hitting, you've been hitting your driver great all day. She just had a bunch of birdies to come back because she'd been behind. Now she has a chance to win. And he's saying, why wouldn't you hit that? She, her intuition was saying, don't hit this driver, just hit any other club. So I think she was going to either hit a four wood or a hybrid. She's like, let me, do, I'm just thinking I should knock it down there. And then eventually she decided partly the discussion with the caddy, but the player always makes the final decision. She decided to hit her driver can imagine what happened the memories from the other thing the unconscious mind drop kicks it snap hooks it into the water loses the u.s women's open or intuition we're going to talk more about intuition here in a little bit um listening to your intuition making your intuition your loudest voice when you're on the golf course so here's the other part about pre-shot routine there's a couple um, oh, sorry i'm trying to keep up with the chat too that's what's so great about having our coaches on uh trouble is filtering out the comments from others in the group oh boy you went real far right in the rough like that's a comment you'll hear so what do you take it to mean about yourself when you get negative comments from others Travis, you are doing great. I'm so excited for you. I am so excited for you. So, so excited. This is, this is awesome. And this is what this part's all about too. All right, pre-shot routine. You want it to be timed. What? To time my pre-shot routine? The more consistent you are before the shot, the more consistent you'll be when you play. Who, how many of you want to be more consistent? Who's looking for more consistency with your great shots in golf? Who's looking for it? Give me a thumbs up or raise your hand or say, yeah, Lori's like, yes, 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 right? More consistency. So be consistent in your pre-shot routine. There was a, a video that a, a colleague of mine saw, Jack Nicholas, years ago when he was very young and then later in his career, and it was of him putting. They, they were at the same point in the video, they hit play on both, and he's watching and then they pause it. I mean, it was like his leg was in the, his right leg was in the air, the exact same amount on both videos. 
And then they rolled both of them a little more and then pause them. And he was in the exact same position. He, his whole putting routine was exactly the same from when he was early in his career to later his career. Now that's consistency. How many steps do you take in? If you look from behind, how many steps? I take three steps in till I'm facing this way. And then my feet are together. I go step out with left, step out with the right, look at the target, take a breath. You know, So being consistent in your pre-shot routine will help you be consistent in your game. Your body positions, where are you looking? The um, strategic, focused, and precise is what we're looking for. Strategic, focused, and precise. If you don't have a pre-shot routine, I encourage you to get one. And then start to practice it, just reinstill it. So then eventually you don't have to think about what you're doing. It's automatic and it's consistent. The more consistent you are before the shot, the more consistent you'll be in the shot. Part of that is belief. Part of that is believing in yourself, having the belief beforehand. This is what I was talking about. Negative post-shot reaction, really positive post-shot reaction or neutral post-shot reaction. You want the second two. We do not want that negative emotion because it will, our neurology will connect that club. He's done. He's done with that club. He might as well give that away, go buy a new one or go get a breakthrough and then he'll be fine. So those negative reactions, think of Jordan Spieth at the Masters. Can you imagine the negative thoughts and emotions that came up when he had a lead in the Masters and he dumps it in the water a couple of times? and ends up losing the Masters. He really hadn't been the same golfer since. He needs a breakthrough. All right, post-shot routine. One of Annika's wonderful qualities. Yes, yes. And her coach was Pia Nielsen from Vision 54. She was very much neutral in her reactions or maybe put a smile on her face. She wasn't overly excited. Uh, when you have... Emotions from a bad shot, you connect the emotions, neurology. Clear them consciously during the match. So if you have negative emotions from a bad shot, you connect them. So consciously during the match, you've, we've got to clear them out. Go, go to gratitude. Get that negative feeling out of there. Uh, take those deep breaths. Be thankful as you're walking. Powerful body language. All of that, and then clear them unconsciously between matches. That's where coaching helps you. Say, oh my gosh, I had this one hole, and I just, oh, I was so mad. I have so much all this. I was frustrated, angry, all this negative emotion after the shot. I need to clear this up. So we make sure we go back and release it from you so it's cleared up unconsciously as well. That's the power of continual coaching. Um, Amy, I just encourage you to watch the video of Amy Brocker set. Could somebody put the link to that video and then just copy and paste the video? Don't go do it now. But Amy, um, Amy is a gal with Down syndrome who was playing the 16th hole at the waste uh, waste management event. It was a men's PGA tour. It was a, one of the practice rounds, and she had the opportunity to play with Gary Woodland. And I think a couple other guys were there, but Gary was the main one talking with her. And you watch Amy, she was mic'd up and she kept saying, I got this. I can do this. I got this. And it was so amazing. Now there's a crowd of people. If, you, if you've ever seen that hole, the 16th hole to par three, there's a crowd of people around. The stands were not a hundred percent full, but there were, you know, quite a few hundred people around in these stands. So her dad says, you got this? She says, I got this. I can do this. She steps up there. She hits the ball on the green side bunker. Doesn't phase her at all. She's walking down the fairway. People are clapping for her. She's like, oh, they love me. They love. Now, how many of us in that situation would be like, oh my gosh, don't embarrass yourself. Look at all these people watching, <laughs> right? Just, just hit a decent shot, get it on the green. And then, and then it goes in the bunker. You're like, ah, oh, and feel we're free from that. Let's more be more like Amy. Just enjoy the moment and stay in the present moment. She's like, and then she, they were clapping for her. She was walking. She's like, they love me. She took it all in. She's getting ready to go hit out of the bunker. And she's, um, okay, great. There's the, there's the link to it. She, and then she just keeps saying, I got this. I can do this. I got this. I can do this. And she keeps saying that to herself. And then uh, she knocks it out gets it on the green, 
And uh, Gary Woodland's like, oh, what do you think? He helps her read it going in. She says, uh, about 115, she starts with the positive. There we go. I wonder if, let me see if I can just bring that up. Hold on. Oh, this is where I always have a problem. You don't have the audio. Okay. Yeah, we, I don't get the audio with this for some reason. Okay. So everybody copy and paste that and hang on to it. I think I think I understand why. So anyway, um, so Amy then she makes the putt. The crowd goes wild the whole time, and she's like and enjoying it, positive self talk the entire time. From that, Gary Woodland later that year had a chance to win his first major in the men's U.S. Open, and he shared with Amy and the world afterwards that learning from Amy, I've got this, I can do that, helped him win the U.S. Open because the last round he said that over and over because it helped him handle any the nerves that were coming up he just kept saying i've got this i can do this i've got this and amy since then has created a foundation she was the um, first person with down syndrome to play golf in college went on to play in the national tournament and the only person in, with down syndrome to ever play in a national tournament and what brings all that home for me is that uh Years ago, before this, Amy was in the LPJ Leadership Academy where I actually taught her, I've got this, I can do this. We, we checked in with her mom after. I was like, you sure that's where she learned? She's, yes. At, ever since then, she kept saying, I've got this, I can do this. She power poses, she uses all of GLAD. So it's, um, it's awesome. Yeah, I say it right before I lift a heavy weight. I can, I can, you got this, right? It's talking ourselves into things and staying in that mindset when you're out on the golf course. So the power of intuition, and this is a part of golf that I don't see anyone else teaching. And this is why we're having you do meditations each day, because we're going to wake up your intuition. What happened with Lorena Ochoa, her intuition was telling her, hit the forward, hit the forward. Basically don't hit this driver. Her intuition was telling her that she ignored it. She didn't listen to it. If she knew the power of her intuition, she would do this. Now I'll, I'll be between clubs and I'll put my hand on a club and I'll say, intuition, is this the right club, this nine iron? And sometimes I get a very clear no. Sometimes I get a very clear yes. And then if it's a no, I'll grab the eight iron because I'm between the nine and eight and I'll ask it. Then I'll get the, the right, the best answer. Your intuition knows it's going to give you the best next answer. So the more you do the meditation, the more you invite your intuition to be your loudest voice, the more it's going to speak with you and help you and support you when you're actually out on the golf course. So how many of you are all golfers, right? How many of you uh, have been over a golf shot and you just get a feeling you should hit the other club? And you're like, but wait, I just did the yardage. I did looked into the wind. I just figured it all out. This is the perfect club. This club always works on this hole. And you swing and it's it's either short or long. And you're like, ah, oh, I knew I should have hit that other one. I knew I should have. Something was telling me to hit that. Or that day that you see the weather forecast and it's beautiful blue skies all day. You get a feeling you should bring your umbrella. And you're like, I just checked the weather. But that little voice inside, that little feeling, that little thought that says, bring your umbrella, we ignore it. And then about 5.30, you're like, Dang, something told me I should have my. Anybody else have that experience with intuition? So imagine the intuition always said, like, I, gosh, I knew that. Something was telling me that. It's always right, right? So what is intuition? This is what I call inside the ropes, right? You can picture the professional golfers are inside the ropes. I call it inside your unconscious mind. So we have these other voices, which we touched on. Yes, but listen to others too often with golf. There we go. So Travis, I'm gonna ask you this one. When did you decide you didn't trust yourself? Was it that incident? Was that the decision? You don't trust yourself? Was there ever a time before that? Um, <clears throat> Yeah. There we go. Beautiful. So we'll look into that too. Um, intuition. It's, the, it's 
It's going to lead you in the next best step. All right, we have these other voices, ego, inner critic, inner child, which was being, remember that was being an effect. Your ego, sometimes we just get angry and mad. It's your ego protecting you, All right? It's what's gonna, it's trying to prove something. Inner critic is that voice is criticizing you, right? All the time, like a critic, critic. That inner child is that, that child that's hurt from when you're a kid. It's hurt. It wants to feel safe, doesn't it? Someone that's going to protect you from, you know, ooh, don't do that. Or the inner critic too. Oh, wait, we're not smart enough to do that. We're not talented enough to do that. Don't do that. So it's all, the job of it's all to protect you. But it's not, is it serving you anymore? And is it trying to protect you because of old limiting decisions that were made? All right, so what we're going to do is increase your trust and confidence in yourself and your own intuition. Who would want that to trust themselves even more, their own decisions to where what other people say doesn't have that influence on you when you and your heart and you and your intuition decide this, having the confidence in your own decisions. All right, so golf techniques, positive golf techniques, golf positive. Yeah, Lori's like, I want that even more. Golf positive techniques, master your mindset to master your life. So these shifts, what we have found with everyone is <laughs> golf is the magnifying glass to what's going on in your unconscious mind. And once we can look at golf and understand it in a way that you say, whoa, okay, wow, hey. This is all areas of my life or in this area of life as well. How is it impacting? That's what you want to look at too. <clears throat> That's what also you want to look at. Yeah, your mindset, right, Charles, is the best club in your bag. 100% absolutely. You, want, you look up quotes about mental game of golf and you see a lot of professionals saying them, this is the most important part of the game. And I would argue the least focused on, the least worked on, unfortunately. and. It's worked on in a conscious way where this program and what we teach is to work on it in the unconscious mind, which makes a greater impact. It's the fastest and easiest way to go from where you are to where you want to be is to get into the unconscious mind and make the changes. All right. Look at your grip. How many of you hold on too tightly? You're squeezing the club. I had a student one time. She was holding so tightly her fingers hurt every single time and she couldn't relax them and i asked her i said what are your hands like when you're driving she's like oh i squeeze the steering wheel too she said i was working in my garden which i love to do and i'm squeezing everything i do i squeeze like i'm, I'm holding on so tightly and and what we realized was that squeezing where she felt insecure unsafe it was so much deeper that she, she held on to have control. She didn't want to be out of control. How many of you get that sense that you don't want to be out of control? You don't want to be out of control. And we squeeze so tightly. So we can look at these things in your golf techniques and go, ooh, there's the control of the club. Putting, putting. Putting is the end result where you get a score after each hole. It's the last, it's the last thing that you're going to add up. It's going to determine when you get this, this score or you miss it and you get the other score. Or maybe you miss it twice, right? We're free from that. Okay. So what is the putting? What does the outcome mean to you? What is the meaning you put to that score? Because don't, haven't we felt kind of judged our whole lives, right? In school, A, B, C, D, we get judged, we get measured, the, even the physical fitness test, we get judged and measured. What does that measurement mean to you? What does that number mean to you? What's the meaning you put to it? Are you your golf score? Or are you this amazing, authentic, real person who just tries her best and you're so happy about that and with who you are? Okay. Um, for me, tight grip, bad shot result. Yeah. Yeah. 
when ready to hit feeling something is not right won't step away and start over all right dot that's that's a technique to absolutely practice when you get from the decision that you made here the think box and you step over that decision line and you're in the play box if the wind comes up if a doubt comes up is something step away get out of there get out start over start over there was a time Annika was on the uh on the tee in the middle of the round she grabbed her club she went and noticed there was slow play it was her turn to hit first and it was slow play you know what she did she went back to her bag she put the head cover back on and put the club back in her bag why she wanted to start her pre-shot routine with the same tempo and timing and everything she always does. So it was consistent. When you are in the play box and you have a thought, you get out of there. Now I'm not saying you need to go put your head cover back on, but get out of there, get back in the think box, think through, go through the whole thing again. It doesn't take that much time. Here was the thing I had uh, one of my clients, she would, she wouldn't step away. Dot same thing. She went, she go, Oh, just swing this, 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 this club will work kind of talked herself into it. No, this is right. But whatever those, any thoughts, she would just swing. And one time she actually, she wasn't hitting driver off the tee. She didn't need it, but she swings and she hits and she cold tops it. So it's, it's in front of her, but it was far enough that she really didn't need that club again, but she rushed. She didn't even go back to her bag. She hits that club. Now she hits it. Well, she hits it through the fairway. Cause it was a dog leg. <laughs> so I'm working with her and we go deep on this. Excuse me one second. Sorry about that. So we go deep on this and we found she didn't like making people wait. And that's why she wouldn't step away. That's why she wouldn't get out of the play box. So we go deeper. So what would happen if people waited? Well, they'd be mad at me. They wouldn't like me. When did you decide this? Well, her parents were divorced and she would have a date with her dad. And she said, I had to be, or I was ready 30 minutes early for my dad. Cause I knew he'd always come early. And if I had to make him wait, oh, it was, it was awful. So I said, well, what did you, what did that represent to you? What was the meaning you put to it? He didn't love me. So imagine that. So this is the power of this work. What we figured out from her rushing on the golf course, not stepping out of the play box, not changing clubs in that one situation, feeling rushed all the time, sometimes not taking a practice swing, sometimes taking a practice swing, depending on if people were waiting for her. It went down to a decision she made when she was a little girl that if I make people wait, I'm not loved and I'm not liked. One of the greatest needs for us human beings is to feel loved to feel valued, to feel worthy. So our unconscious mind is going to do whatever it takes to get those thoughts, to get those emotions. And even if conscious, she's, she's like, gosh, I, I just, I try to slow down. I try to step out of that play box. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I got this runny nose thing. Uh, so does that make sense? It makes sense that it's, it's, there's a, there's a reason underneath in your unconscious mind that creates the behaviors. It creates these actions, you know, chipping, chipping, not being that specific, you know, cause we want to be really specific, trusting your decision. Am I going to do a pitch shot here? Am I going to do a chip shot? There's so many different clubs you could choose. I could chip with my sand wedge or my pitching wedge. I could play it forward or back in my stance. You know, do I want to land it here and roll it more? Or do I want to land it closer to the hole and not roll it very much? There's all these decisions. So that's trust trusting your decisions, and then being clear on the decision you've made and stepping in with belief. If you don't, what's the cause? Drills, being focused. How many of us, in a way, sometimes say we have a, 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 a limiting decision that I'm not smart enough. So we kind of study for a test, but we don't give it all that we have. Because then what if I really study my hardest and then I go take the test and I fail anyway, that'll just prove to me I'm not smart enough. So your brain's trying to protect you. So you can then say, well, I didn't, I didn't have enough time to study. You go into effect. Well, I really didn't have enough time. So in drills, if you're not hundred percent focused and doing exactly what you want, or maybe you don't even like to do the drills, but you kind of do it halfway, half focused, half not. 
because then if you don't get it, your unconscious mind kind of knows, well, I didn't give it my best. So it's okay. I might be good enough still, but I don't know. Instead of proving to yourself, I did everything and I still didn't win. Now I know I wasn't good enough. So we kind of, you know, maybe are too busy to do all the drills. Full swing is the same idea. Can we get relaxed and trust that full swing? Are we in control? Are we forcing it? Is the outcome mean that much that I have to make sure the ball goes there? And we know in anything you don't do as well. Throwing a ball, like if you just try to make sure it goes there as opposed to being relaxed and throwing. I'm sure Jessica riding a horse, you're trying to force the horse to do anything is not going to work. Feeling that tension and making it happen rather than I got to relax and trust this. I got to trust me. I've got to let, let go of control in a sense right? I've got to let go of control in a sense. Where's the control in the golf swing? It's in your head and spine. We just, it's all centrifugal force. We can trust gravity and centrifugal force. It's consistent every time. When us human beings try to force it to happen, it's not consistent. So there's a way to swing to get you out of your own way. What is your mental attitude when things are tough on the golf course? Or is this, woo, this is an opportunity shot. Watch this. I'm going to hit this shot out of the rough. It's going to go right where I want. I'm going to chip this out of the trees. I'm going to still make a good score on this hole. Is it an opportunity to come through? Or you're like, oh, my gosh. And you're like, this is a hard shot. Look, it's in a divot. People will do that all the time. Oh, it's in a divot. I'm like, hey, you're hitting the ball first anyway. Go up there and hit it. You got this. You can still hit a good shot out of there. I mean, think of the, some of the greatest shots we've seen in golf. Bubba at the Masters is one I remember. Yesterday, we, they were at Mission. Uh, they were playing the Chevron, which is the old Dinah Shore at Mission Hills. And remember years ago, um, Brittany Lincecombe hit, makes an eagle on the 18th to win the event. Remember the chip shot Tiger made at the Masters? The Masters is coming up this week, so it's kind of on my mind. When it went, he chipped it up to the left and it trickled down. It held on the edge just for dramatic effect and then dropped in the hole. It was like, woo, never. He missed the green. He had a poor shot beforehand. And then he had this challenging shot. It was an opportunity to make this amazing shot. Bubba missed the fairway, missed the rough, hit it out by the trees, hit this incredible shot to knock the ball on the green. You know, so it's so interesting. Like what, what is your perspective on that? And when in life, when things happen, when there's traffic or when you spill coffee or when, you know, something happens, does it, is it an opportunity to turn this day around or is it, Oh, this is going to be a bad day. It's going to be a bad day. I'm missing what's going on in the chat. Can't force the horse to do anything. It's a partnership. There we go. I just got a smack down with a belief from childhood. There we go. Lori, feel free to share too. That could probably support others. Um, is that Charles? That's why I dislike the comment or label daydreamer. I learned that it was really, uh, that I really cared enough to focus. They were just less patient. Eventually I broke that mindset. Excellent, Charles. Charles has done one breakthrough already. I've done a few, <laughs> just keep finding the next level and finding the next level. Breakthroughs are, are the key. Awesome, Charles. Awesome. And, and now I'm so glad because you can now meditate and be like dreaming. That's what meditation is. We're daydreaming. We're just doing daydreams. All right. Golf, positive power of emotions. Know your emotions. Be your own personality. Play with your best authenticity. What are the character, qualities and characteristics of yourself when you are your most authentic? Write some of those down in your, in your judgment journal. What are your qualities and characteristics of you when you are your most authentic? Think about that for a moment. But whether it's being with some playing partners with whom you're so relaxed and comfortable. Um, what is that for you? When you're your most authentic when you're at um, maybe a gathering with, with family, I remember when I was a little kid, I was my most authentic when I was just in my home with my immediate family. And then I could be, you know, I could sing and dance and be me and, and actually talk. <laughs> when, when I was outside of that, I wasn't my most authentic. Now I've become my most authentic, right? 
I choose to be alone. No one can hurt me when I'm alone. Prove the doubters wrong, including myself. There you go. Great awareness. Choose to be, no one can hurt me when I'm alone. So there's a belief, right? That when I'm around others, I'll get hurt. Other people will hurt me. So that just, that just came up, Lori, just in this conversation, just in this, this day. So that's allowing your intuition and unconscious mind to say, whoop, hey, that's why the judgment journal is so important. Hopefully you're all still really going strong with that judgment journal because that's the key. That's your unconscious mind trying to say, hey, here's, here's something to look at. Here's something to shift. Let's, let's release this. Let's, let's, let's let go of this. Let's break through that rope that's around your ankle and holding you back because you used to believe it. It's not serving us anymore. It's not the truth. Let's break through this, right? By now, you know, all the answers are in that unconscious mind of yours. Peak state. When you are in peak state, what are your emotions? When you play your best, what is your peak state, right? That avatar. Who are you in that peak state? Who are you? What are your personality characteristics are you quiet are you talkative are you laughing are you serious are you are you um just zeroed in focus on golf the whole time or do you have other conversations in between who are you when you're playing your best what is your peak state and that could be in life too when they when think of times when you're the most happy where things are clicking in life you have the answers it's easy. It's effortless. Like, do you need some, do you need to be competitive no matter what the round is? Does that fire you up? Like Tiger Woods, when he won the U S open at Pebble beach by like, I don't know, 15 shots or something. <laughs> he had such a huge lead going into the last day. And there was this one particular holes coming, kind of coming down the stretch where he missed the green. He didn't chip it that close. He has a long putt and he is looking at this putt as if it means a tournament win. went on both sides. He's analyzing, he's looking at it. And then he makes this putt and he goes crazy like the Tiger Woods move. And afterwards, the announcers asked him about that. I said, Tiger, we couldn't help but notice how intense you were looking at that putt and reading the putt and then the celebration you had. And you already had like a 10, 12, or whatever, shot lead. And he said, oh, he said, well, I just wanted to make sure I stayed focused throughout the day. So I challenged myself. My goal for the day was to um, not make any bogeys. And if I missed that putt, I would have made a bogey. So he, he set this intention for the day and boom, like he was going after it so that he could still stay focused each and every shot. So he didn't let the round get away from him. So that's what he needs. What do you need? What do you need? Write those things down in your judgment journal. And then where, where do you not have that? Like the worst, right? Remember when we went over the worst round, the not avatar. So add to either of those. So just like we've been talking about the powers in the unconscious mind, this is the, this is all research-based. And then I just read something recently that said 5% conscious mind. Um, this is the, the first research that I did on this. It's critical thinking, your conscious mind, logical thinking. It stores short-term memories. It's your willpower. So when you set a goal and it's willpower, 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 you're forcing yourself. The conscious mind tries to use willpower to control behaviors, habits, beliefs, but loses out to the unconscious mind's greater influence. So it works to a point. How many of you done that where you pushed yourself, just willpower, forcing yourself all the time. So to a point it's gonna work, then the unconscious mind will have the greater influence. The unconscious mind, <laughs> it's where your beliefs are. That's what we keep talking about. What beliefs are in your unconscious mind? It's your creativity. It's the developmental stages. It's all from that. It knows everything, remembers everything. It's your emotions and feelings, your habits, your addictions, your imagination, your intuition, your long-term memory. It's, it, gives, it provides protective reactions. 
it's going to protect you. It's where your values are. That's when we did the values elicitation yesterday. It was let the answers come quickly because we want your unconscious values because they're the ones that guide you. Um, and hypnosis is used, uses this part of the mind for change. <clears throat> so to tell you um, a story, I, I think I've mentioned about me bowling. So what I decided when I, I, I had a goal to shoot a 300 game hadn't done it yet. And so I implemented a strategy because I was trying on my own and I find I get too nervous. Right. And then I decided, well, if I don't have a 300 game, I don't have a 300 game. But then about a week later, I'm like, no, I really want to have a 300 game. Let's set this goal. Let's, let's take some action towards it. So I immediately asked uh, Nelson Burton, Jr. Bo Burton, he was a bowling hall of famer if he'd give me bowling lessons. So I wanted to get the performance skills to the next level. Secondly, I worked on this conscious reframe, right? Taking charge of my emotional state. I went to a sports psychologist. So we worked on the conscious part and she did a hypnotic meditation for me. And we worked on the unconscious and we were getting down to beliefs and all that. So we, I learned both with her. And then I had a fitness expert. So I had this whole combination. At the same time, I was working with uh, a golf professional on my golf game. So it was a really neat time. And I had a job <laughs> in my life. So I'm, I'm focused. I'm taking bowling lessons. I'm practicing my ball and performance skills. See the sports psychologist, doing a meditation every day and working with a fitness trainer and working out in between doing some golf, doing lots of bowling. What happened was when it was time that I had the 10th, 11th strike in a row and I felt all those nerves, I was so ready for that moment. And my bowling just kept getting better and better. And then I was able to succeed in the goal. About a month later, six weeks later, I shot my lowest round ever in an LPGA event and I was low round of the day. And I had, I had previously gone into those events feeling less than everyone. I was, I started golf later. So I always thought I was behind and there was these great golfers like, Oh, she's a great golf. She's great. And I never saw myself in that category. I was a low round of the day. And what was it? It was this formula that was put all together. And now I'm bringing that system to golf. Cause what I noticed is it's all that it's the conscious mind, the unconscious mind. So in between those two is the critical faculty. The critical faculty is, is sometimes we want it to be really thin. We want it to be thin like paper. Uh, and many, many people have it where it's thick. So it's harder to get into that unconscious mind. So the more you meditate, the thinner that critical faculty gets. And then your intuition can really become your loudest voice. That meditation is the key and releasing any limiting decisions in the unconscious mind that create this really thick critical faculty that's looking to protect you. Okay, so it's a combination of both. Any questions? Who's I, I haven't I haven't engaged in the chat. Who has questions? Any questions? Anything coming up? Everybody understanding the power of the unconscious mind? Because we know you know it's the unconscious mind is the key, the key to your champion mindset. What is the champion mindset? Conscious learnings can improve your game and your life, but in order to reach your deity avatar, you must shift your unconscious mind. So I just want to share my includes. My, my clients include professional athletes, C-suite executives, multimillionaires, and other high performers, as well as the um, amateur golfers who just say, I just want to have more fun out there. I just get so nervous and I feel... I feel judged or less than like I don't belong, like blah, 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 free from that. It's, it's all levels. And the answers lie in the unconscious mind for all levels. So for those, I, I, I want to ask your permission on this. Um, so I want to share an opportunity to take this farther. Remember I said to all of you, I, I will um, offer an opportunity to take this um, deeper. We still have two days to go. Friday pulls it all together. I mean, Friday, the fifth day pulls it all together. Tomorrow, so cool. We're going to set a goal. There's, there's more to do. Uh, like I said, our goal, coaches and I, is to over-deliver for you. And, and 
So there's more to do. Um, this work with Debbie has completely changed my game and my life. Excellent. So Lori started, I met Lori through a keys to a champion mindset. And she's talking about it changed her life because she, she loved this work so much and it changed her life so much, starting with this and then taking the next step that she wanted to do this for other people and went deep, deep dive in her education and became a coach herself. So really, Lori, I'm just thrilled for you. I'm thrilled for you. So I want to ask your permission. Um, can I, do you all mind? Do what do we, are you interested in hearing about the opportunity that we have to take this farther, to truly create that breakthrough, to get to that deity avatar, to take your life and your golf game um, to the next level, that next level and beyond. I mean, I'm talking the beyond level, not just the next level. Uh, so give me some yeses in there, you know, let's hear it. Sorry, I'm gonna drink some more water as I'm waiting for you. Who else is on? I know we have a bunch of people shared that they are going to watch on replay because they're working today. But we have, uh, we have plenty of you on today. More yes, and anybody else want to hear about just an opportunity? Obviously, you get to make your final decision, especially you. Yeah, absolutely, Travis. Yeah, this is just a presentation so you know what's possible, what's out there. That next, yeah, Brenda, always want to listen. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's just finding out what are the opportunities out there. Because like I said, what I've done is through my experience, through, and like I said, I have implemented everything I'm teaching in my life and it has made such a tremendous impact. Like how would it impact your life? Think about this right now. How would your life be impacted if you release some of these negative decisions and limiting decisions that were made when you were a kid that still influence you today? If you could break through, break through. this is the way... Um, I look at it like a hot air balloon, right? And, and we can just look at golf and then and relate this to life as well. So if you've ever been in a hot air balloon, you know, it has the basket, right? And then there's these big ropes where it's tethered down. It's kind of like the elephant, right? That's with these stakes in the ground so that when they, that the balloon won't get caught by the air and blow away. So it's tethered down. So the way I look at getting uh working hard on it but can always use more tools yeah you know i know so many people i have coached people who've gone to therapy for years they've had to, to, such traumatic events or they just want more in life and they realize that there are so many things that has them in this mindset that's not serving them anymore and what uh what one of my clients said to me she said oh my gosh it's like therapy i understood it i understood where from where it came but this works helped me to help me to release it and let go of it and get to where I've always wanted to be. And she's like, I am so thankful for this work and the breakthrough that allowed me to completely release it, detach the emotions, the old meanings I put to this and the things I believed about myself. And she said, so much of the therapy, I would be aware of it. I understood from where it came. But it still would have my my reactions would still be the same. My negative thinking would still be the same. She said, I'd try to change it. But it, wow. She's like, now it's like it's not there. It's it's gone. Like it's detached. It's it's now do, do we do we take events in your life and make them disappear? No. We attach the meaning you put to you because of the event. That's what goes away. So if if someone mistreated you and in a way, if someone was critical with you all the time, somewhere oftentimes we decide then to treat ourselves that same way. I had a, I had a golf student. This was before I got even deeper in this work. I was always, I always was into mindset. She criticized herself after every single swing in a lesson, everything, even the one that would go in the air and, 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 you know, solid, solid hit. And she'd find out, she goes, well, it didn't go where I aimed it. Oh, it didn't go very far, like every single time. And I said, 
I said, do you criticize yourself in all areas of life? And she said, yeah, well, except one. She said, except in bridge. I'm really good. She was a nationally ranked bridge player. And I said, when did you decide that you deserve to be, to criticize yourself like that? She said, oh, she, she said my whole life. She said, my dad, I was never good enough. He criticized me all the time, all the time, all the time. And um, so then she didn't feel deserving of praise. She didn't feel deserving of celebration. She didn't think she was good enough to be loved and valued. So we didn't get that deep because I wasn't a life coach at the time. I just, I worked on the conscious reframes with her at the time, did the best I could for what I knew, but we talked about it. We understood it. And then I challenged her to start looking at the positive things she does in her life. And after every golf shot, she had to say something positive. Everyone, even if she topped it and it rolled, I said, what's the positive? And then we got into gratitude. So, so much of what we do and think right now, basically everything is our programming. We just get programmed. And that programming happens at such a young age. That's why getting into this unconscious mind is key. So, uh, all right. So here's the opportunity. So I have, um, this is a 2022 newly created program because I continue to learn and I just want to make programs that are better and better and more impactful. So it's the mastery golf positive revolutionary system. This will absolutely fully unlock your true potential. You can live and play with confidently with unshakable belief, expose and release all of those limiting decisions and unconscious beliefs that are keeping you from having your abilities and skills shine. We'll release negative emotions around golf or any other area of life. Bam. You would, who wants that? <laughs> I was like, woo, you'd want that, wouldn't you? All right, performance skills. So this is the reason I created this program because I lived it and I did it really in bowling and golf because I was practicing golf at the same time and it, it influenced both. Bowling though was the, the first and foremost that really got me going to the sports psychologist and then influenced all other areas of life. But the performance skills. Right. I'm an LPGA professional, um, top 50. So blessed to be um, in that list because there are so many incredible teachers out there. Uh, so golf performance skills, be uh, fully confident in your foundation and skills in all areas of the game. Approach each shot with total belief. You imagine that just that alone. How great would you play? How great would you play? This is the part that, that my hot air balloon thing, we're putting the heat on. We are putting the heat on that hot air balloons going. The lessons you take, the performance skills I'll be teaching here. Whew, the hot air balloon is rising, right? Uh, enjoy at home and at course practice sessions that take your game to the next level. I, I do virtual clinics. And, and in this particular program, I have on course skills, performance um, techniques, ways to practice and play and drills, as well as at home. Like how many of you sometimes just don't have time to get to the golf course to practice? Anybody else like that besides me? You just don't have time? How cool would it be if you had effective practice sessions at home that can also improve those performance skills? Anybody else feel kind of like that? Either don't have the time or don't have the desire to, to drive to the golf course? but you could practice. I had one person who took my virtual clinic. She said, oh my gosh, I got better in your virtual clinic than I did in the clinics I'm taking outside in my private golf lessons because it made it simple and easy to do. And she was able to practice more. And the, the drills that, that I share are really impactful. Um, learn and enhance, improve everything from putting to on course play. So that's the performance part of it. So that's when I went and got Nelson Burton Jr., the Hall of Famer, I said, can you give me, but would you give me bowling lessons? Um, and he did. Now the reframing consciously, this is when I went to the sports psychologist and we started, this is part like blab is part of the reframe consciously. So know even more hand how to, when you're competing, when you're about to do a speaking engagement, when you're about to have a big meeting, when you're about to be with friends and family, and there may be some tension, how to get yourself in your best state when challenging things happen in life. Because here's the, here's the thing about that. You know, life is going to offer challenges. 
for us. And if you love and you care and you're a good person, which I know you are because that's who I attract, really good people. Uh, Dodd's retired and has the time to play. Excellent. Brenda says never enough time. There we go. You know, we're all, we're all different. Uh, but when we care and we, we are good people, we're going to be sad sometimes. You know, life, life is going to happen to, you know, where people are going to get that sick whom we love. People will pass whom we love. And, you know, we may go through our own challenges. Here's the key. The better you handle those on the mental state, the, the better you get through them. What do we talk about being in cause? You're in solution oriented. You see possibilities. You have more options and things. You can make better decisions moving forward. So there's this great formula. E plus R equals O. This is, this, is, this is so good, you may want to write it down. E plus R equals O. There's an event in life, and a lot of people think then there's the outcome. The key to this is the R. It's how you react to the events in life. And with a positive mindset, both consciously and unconsciously, your reaction can be such that you influence the outcome in a better way. E plus R equals O. So reframing consciously helps that R be even better. And that's on golf courses. That's, that's everywhere in life. So grow your game more intuitively strategies to uh, for your golf game and high performance habits strategies for shifting your mindset consistently understanding how to create internal motivation to reach your desired goals be in the habit of achieving your goals i came up with that saying i say it a lot i am in the habit of achieving my goals yes i am in the habit of achieving my goals yes <laughs> so very fun i'll, I'll have a to-do list and i'll check it off I'll be like, check one thing. Oh, I am in the habit of achieving my goals. Yes. So I created a journal to go with the 12 weeks of triumph program. It's a unique and powerful way to track and execute your plan. It's an effective way to think, feel, and behave like a champion. So having the journal uh, is really incredibly powerful. Uh, there's strategies, and exercises to uh, help you make decisions like professional athletes, C-suite executives, and leaders, and create an unstoppable mindset. Anybody else know that song? I'm unstoppable. I'm a Porsche with no brakes. Ooh, love that song. All right, then there's the Inside the Ropes meditation series. So mindset transformation on the unconscious level. So this was, oh, that's cool, Lori. This is the part when I did the meditation with my sports psychologist before I had my 300 game and shot the low round of the day in the golf tournament. So before all that came this part, the hypnotic meditation. So we transform your mindset at the unconscious level. We allow your intuition to be your loudest voice that guides you to make the best decisions. You'll be inspired to take positive actions. So when your unconscious mind has the beliefs and the shift, you're inspired to take the action. Golf and live your life with unshakable belief and confidence. Become your avatar. That's the part of the meditation. And that's where I'm creating meditations that will support you in going from that think box to the play box and literally slowing down your brain waves in the, thing, in the play box. And then creating this mindset where the outcome is released. You're just, now you're just in the moment and you're swinging and we're creating that on a meditative level, which will support what we do in the breakthrough. So cool. We put it all together. And the other part that I shared that I did was the personal fitness. So this is that hot air balloon, right? So the hot air balloon is going up. I'm working on conscious reframes. I'm getting my personal fitness, working on the, the hypnotic tapes and I'm doing all this and that balloon's going up and the balloon's going up. It's all working. So this particular young lady is Karen Flasios Jansen and she owns a company called Cardio Golf. And with Cardio Golf, um, we've teamed up and she's doing the personal fitness. I'm not, I've been working out and I've been an athlete my whole life. I'm not a trained fitness expert and I want to bring you the best. And she's the best when it comes to golf fitness. So Cardio Golf is her company. So she takes care of the fitness part. So it's those four parts 
that helped me. Oh, did we have a whole introduction there? I didn't realize that. All right, so this is the mastery program. The revolutionary, so the part that I just described is the revolutionary system. The perform, I call it grip, golf performance skills, reframe the conscious, reframe consciously inside the ropes, which is the meditations and personal fitness. You know, I love my acronyms. I can't help myself. So the revolutionary system is called grip. With the mastery portion of it, you also will get group coaching. This is with me and a small group of people coaching for 12 weeks in this revolutionary system. You also get the breakthrough. So here's the key to the breakthrough. You know that hot air balloon that's gone up, but it's still a little bit tethered? We untether those limiting decisions in the fastest, easiest way. So you get a breakthrough with this. And you get then because we want to we want to keep you on track for like it's like a, it's a full year. So we have ongoing personal coaching. So then you have uh, two hours a month with your coach that you can you can do two hours once you can do two one hours. You can do a 30 minute and a 90 minute decide on the 30 minute. What do we need to un unleash? And then we do the, the next part, the 90 minute, we do another breakthrough or we do, you, you have those two hours a month for the next six months after your 12 weeks of the revolutionary system grip. Any questions so far? I hope I'm explaining all this right. And then you get, uh, we're going to do swing analysis. We're going to continue with swing analysis and personal training sessions. Karen's going to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> so this, like I said, is the whole system the mastery revolutionary system, it's grip and personal coaching. It's the whole shebang. It's amazing. Um, and just so you know, the breakthrough, it transforms your mindset around golf. It will release what's not working for you to implement your skills and strategies. You get a clear action plan to implement your champion mindset, an in-depth breakthrough in order to transform your beliefs, emotions, and attitudes towards golf. So what is a breakthrough? You get with your coach, you get a detailed personal history. You work through everything, you know, you understand from where, like kind of the questions we started doing. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot, right? It's a year. Cause I know I've done, I've done like five days. I've had a shift, right? I've learned some things. The continuing coaching has been the key to my life the key to everything. We release negative emotions, anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt. We release limiting decisions. The ones that we're talking about, that belief about yourself that I'm not good enough. I'm not valued. I'm not worthy. I'm not smart enough. You know, those kinds of things released, unleashed, gone. Empowering beliefs are re replaced. We resolve any internal conflict around golf. The, the one that comes up the most in people I work with is how, I have a competitive round and I have my fun round and I play best in my fun round. But how do I bring that to that? What if, what if we can combine these and, and resolve that internal conflict around golf and just have fun and be competitive? How about a new mindset with golf strategies, a detailed plan and tools to increase your certainty to hit your golf goals. Imagine if you had more certainty on that. So this is the value of everything. This is the, the actual value of grip. The revolutionary system, just grip alone, is um, almost $11,000. The weekly group coaching value is nearly $3,000. The personal breakthrough is a $5,000 value. The post breakthrough coaching, six months of mentorship is over $6,000 value. You get the swing analysis where you take a video of your swing and myself or another highly qualified LPGA professional will analyze it for you and give you your tips to work on your own swing. That's part of the performance skills. Virtual training, four sessions with Karen, you one-on-one, -on -one. virtual. So you just set up your camera and you, you work out together. She's going to make sure you're in all the best positions, all the proper positions to get the most out of the exercise in your body. So then I throw in a 30-day positive start program. So before we start GRIP, we get your mindset ready with a 30-day program. So you have that and then 12 weeks. So you get another additional four weeks. So another 16 in this. So that, that whole start to this program is 16 weeks long rather than just the 12 weeks. 
Um, I do mental game of golf webinars, which are really, oh gosh, I, I, I love doing those. And we, we shift that. It's more of a conscious mindset shift, but it's things you take right onto the golf course. And then I do group breakthroughs where you're, you're in with a group of people and we get to one limiting decision or one negative emotion. Then we release that just, just one of them. So we have that option as well. And then I do a mid month motivation every month. And, uh, it's, it's just keeping everybody going. It's the motivation to, uh, work and achieve your goals and be in the habit of achieving your goals. So the whole value of this mastery system is over $36,000. That's the value of all of this. Think about for a full year, if you were going to hire a golf professional, a fitness expert, a uh, mindset expert, or, or, or a, you know, life coach, you know, what would all of that do if you had that for an entire year? You know, this would be the value, but that's not what we're going to say. This, you can have all of this for just 10, under, just under $10,000. So this is the mastery golf positive revolutionary system. This is where no one else in this industry that I've seen is putting all of this together. That system that had me shooting 300 games, that had me, you know, shooting the low scores in tournaments and, and cashing in, in my LPGA events. So the revolutionary system, it puts it all together. So that's when that hot air balloon is fully unleashed and the sky's the limit. That's when you get to that deity avatar. That's what, that's the absolute key um, in life. So that champion mindset, a mindset of a champion, flexible and strong. You harbor the ability to cope with setbacks and obstacles and also have a strong will to succeed and overcome any failures that come your way. You don't make excuses or criticize yourself. Can you just imagine that? It's their strong, conscious and unconscious belief in themselves that keeps them mentally adept and resilient. A champion mindset creates continued growth and progress where goals and, and where we exceed the goals. Um, so, and I also do a fast action bonus. So I said, I do virtual golf clinics. Um, uh, that's actually the value is that's one, one ninety seven, <laughs> Um, and then a one-time release. So a traumatic event, one of those events, like what Travis went back to that one event has impacted everything. You get that, which is a $1,500 value. This is the fast action bonus. So when you talk to your coach today, or you just go on right now and go to champion mindset.coach and put in a $500 deposit, you secure the fast action bonuses. You get this entire program, the entire program. I think I went the wrong way. Oh, no, oh, I, I wanna go back to the homework. All right, any questions on this? I know it's time to, uh, so this is everything you get for just $10,000, $500 deposit secures the fast action bonuses right now. If you have any questions, you know, your coaches can answer any questions. They, um, they obviously know the program very well, so they can answer any questions on that. All right, homework for today. Coaching calls, coaching calls, coaching calls. Let your coach to support you, kind of like we were doing here with asking those questions to really understand and then get you a plan to go forward in releasing these things. Post on Facebook, get your raffle tickets. Share an old limiting belief that has come up through today's session. And how has that limiting belief impacted your golf game and your life? And not only how it's impacted yours, you can put this in your judgment journal or you can put it on Facebook as well. How has it impacted those around you? How is, you know, being self-critical? How is doubting yourself, not trusting yourself? How has that impacted not only you, but your family, and people around you, maybe your career? Um, meditation. Today, you step into your avatar. Today's meditation is so cool. You become your avatar. Uh, continue to make your move. And you are going to get a golf positive scorecard that you can print out. Should I bring it down? Oh, yeah. Now I have it. Let me show it to you. Uh, the golf positive scorecard. So this is what's really cool about this. What we want to keep score about is, did you have a clear plan? Each shot, scale of one to 10. Were you committed to the shot? Were you in a positive state? How was your reaction, your post-shot reaction? Highly positive or one would be quite negative. All right, so that's the scorecard 
I want you to print out. And then on the back, guess what? We have bear power. We want to know your beliefs and thoughts. We want to know your emotions, the actions, and the behaviors. So this scorecard, it'll print out, it'll print out like that. And then just fold it in half. And here's your golf scorecard. The golf positive scorecard, this will give you insight into everything. I encourage you to play. And this isn't a tournament round type thing. This is when you go play, print that out and then keep track because you're going to understand so much more about your mindset and your emotions. So print that out and use it if you're going to play some golf. All right. Let me stop my screen share here for a moment. Any questions? Any questions? Anybody thinking, wow, that revolutionary system is really amazing. It includes everything. I'm telling you, that's what shifted everything for me is putting all of that together. If you have any questions at all, ask your coaches. It's really um, <clears throat> quite an opportunity. As a matter of fact, you know, Eric is, Eric is on my <laughs> team, right? And she's like, oh, wow, you really include a lot in there. <laughs> I said, I know I like to over deliver. I really do. I want to, I love to give up, you know, $36,000 value for 10. I love it. I love it. It's fun. I mean, how many of you feel like right now that $97 um, for the entry into this five days is one well worth it. And we've over delivered between the private one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, the 90 minutes a day, the knowledge you've gained already, the shifts that you may have made already. Um, anybody else think, wow, wow, this is, yeah, excellent. Excellent. I'm so, I'm so like, that's what I love to do. The whole team, we all love to do that. We want to want to give you a product that's amazing and, and exceed your expectations. So that's always our goal. All right, everybody, we will see you tomorrow. I am so excited. Uh, tomorrow, whoa, we're going to set a goal that you will achieve. And then on Wednesday, we just bring it all there. There's just so much that continues to come together. There's way more to learn. And um, I'm excited to share it all with you. So we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great one, everybody. And those of you on the replay, <clears throat> thanks, for, thanks for catching up. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.